So, this may seem a bit random to some of you guys out there, but the pairing of Cersei and Rhaegar was actually a possibility in A Song of Ice and Fire at one point. It's something not really explored in the show as it is in the books. At one point during the time of Aerys II, the Mad King, Tywin, his hand, and once upon a time one of his best friends actually proposed that his daughter Cersei marry the Prince Rhaegar. In the books, Rhaegar seemed to be the only other person Cersei was more infatuated with outside of herself and her twin brother Jaime. In fact, she even compares the two of them at one point, saying that Jaime was a callow boy in the face of the Dragon Prince. She had an obsession with Rhaegar that continued even after he died. But, why did their marriage never come to pass? It seemed like a pretty good match, if we're being honest. The daughter of one of the most powerful, rich, and affluent houses in the realm, the child of the king's hand, and years ago, the king's best friend, engaged to the king's eldest son and heir to the throne. Well, the reason the match never happened is because Aerys had a very low opinion of Tywin and his family, despite the bond they once had. He was envious of Tywin and distrustful. At one point, he even lusted after his wife, Joanna Lannister. And because of that, there are theories that Tyrion in the books is actually the son of Mad King Aerys. You are an ill-made, spiteful little creature, full of envy, lust, and low cunning. Men's laws give you the right to bear my name and display my colors, since I cannot prove that you are not mine. But that's an entirely different topic than what we have today. During the time of his proposal, Aerys actually referred to his hand as a servant, and that also fell to Cersei by extension. Because the Lannisters were seen as servants, not friends, lords, or valued vassals, he believed a marriage to Cersei was beneath Rhaegar, and therefore refused further driving that wedge between the lion and the dragon. But as we'll be discussing today, what if he hadn't refused? What if all those years ago, instead of Elia Martell, Rhaegar Targaryen married Cersei Lannister? How would history change? For starters, let's talk about how this could actually come to pass. At this point in history, Aerys and Tywin are not on the best of terms. As mentioned earlier, Aerys was very jealous and distrusting of the Lion Lord, afraid of the power he was gaining, and how he was undermining his rule without even trying. He didn't want him to gain too much power, and it definitely seems that despite keeping him his hand, he was still keeping Tywin at a distance. Let's say in this timeline, Aerys still has a lot of animosity towards Tywin, and this isn't magically going to change, but despite this dislike for him, perhaps he's going to look past it for a moment, seeing the advantage in marrying Tywin's daughter to his son. You could even get a bit darker with this as well and say Aerys really sees Cersei as a tool to use against Tywin, kind of like Jaime was. Aerys wanted Jaime to join the Kingsguard as a slight to Tywin. By binding his oldest son, his true heir, into his service, the boy Tywin was pretty much betting everything on and leaving him with only his dwarf son Tyrion instead was like a slap in the face. Perhaps Cersei is similar. Even though this is Tywin's suggestion, maybe the Mad King sees this as another way to keep Tywin in check and have more control over him. You could even say that another reason he accepts this is because of Tywin's wife, Joanna. Aerys did have a thing for her, and it was rumored at times that she was a paramour to the king, though we don't know that for sure. Aerys could see bringing Cersei into the family as another way for him to get his hands on Joanna through her daughter, though she is dead at this point. It's kind of a twisted and warped way of thinking, but that pretty much sums up Aerys Targaryen at this point. Or maybe he just happens to be willing to look past all his negative emotions for a moment and accepts the marriage instead of insulting the Lord of Lannister. Because it isn't a bad pairing. Either way, whatever route seems more likely, Rhaegar and Cersei are set to be married now, and this is going to change a lot. For starters, a marriage between the dragon and the lion could make the relationship between the Lannisters and the Crown a bit better in this timeline. Aerys and Tywin will still be at odds, but things will be a bit better than they were in canon. Obviously, with the marriage of Cersei to Rhaegar, this will mean that Rhaegar never marries Elia Martell of Dorne, so the Dornish won't be as close to the royal family as they were in the canon timeline. Elia gets to stay with her family and probably won't be such a gruesome end as she did originally, especially since I don't see Robert's Rebellion breaking out in this timeline for a few reasons. The main one being that a lot of relationships are going to change as a result of Cersei marrying Rhaegar, the first being Rhaegar's relationship with Lyanna. If Rhaegar married Cersei, then I find it unlikely that he has a relationship with the She-Wolf. Now, in the show version of Thrones, it is stated that they were in love, marrying in secret, but we don't know if this is true in the books. Maybe Lyanna was in love with Rhaegar, but he just wanted to use her for a magical prophecy baby. Who knows? But regardless, one of the reasons he sought Lyanna out was likely because Elia couldn't produce any more children. 
Elia was a very frail woman. She was born premature, and the births of her children, Rhaenys and Aegon, took a fairly heavy toll on her body. So having more kids beyond them definitely would have put her life at risk. But with Cersei, you don't have this issue. As we see in canon, she doesn't have any issues producing children during her marriage with Robert, even if it's not with Robert. She has Joffrey, Tommen, and Marcella. If we're going off the show version of events, there's also that unnamed son she had with Robert first, the one that died of a fever. Though, some people actually theorize that this black-haired prince was actually Gendry. Then he started asking me about my mother. Your mother? Who she was, what she looked like. She died when I was little. She had yellow hair. She'd sing to me sometimes. I had a lot of people say this in that video I made a few weeks ago where I explored a different possibility, which was what if Cersei and Robert had a trueborn son in every sense of the word. Now, Cersei being the true mother of Gendry theory is something I don't really buy into, but if you do, that's cool. In the show as well, there was also a fourth Lannister child during the end of the show, though never born as Cersei died. Regardless of that though, all of this is evidence to say that Cersei has no issue with conception and no issue with birthing children like Elia did, so it's very likely that she's more than capable of giving Rhaegar children. Some golden dragons for the bunch. In the show, Cersei had two boys and a girl, and Rhaegar also had two boys and a girl through Rhaenys, Aegon, and Jon later on down the line. So this matchup of children may be the same here as well in this new timeline. Maybe the order of children is different since Marcella was the youngest of Cersei's children. Perhaps she has two boys first and then a girl. Or maybe since this is a what if scenario, nothing is guaranteed to go the same way. Cersei and Rhaegar could have one son and two daughters. Or maybe even more kids since Cersei won't have any issues delivering like Elia did. But either way, it doesn't really matter. Rhaegar will get his children with Cersei. Aegon and Rhaenys like he had with Elia. And to make things a bit more interesting here, assuming that Cersei happens to have another daughter instead of a second son, we'll say that since Rhaegar seems to be recreating the Targaryen trinity, his daughter with Cersei will be named Visenya. With the birth of three children and perhaps the prospect of more on the way, Rhaegar may not need or want to go after Lyanna to have his child, unless he's really sold on the whole Song of Ice and Fire prophecy and the symbolism that would come from their union. Lyanna may actually get to live in this timeline if Rhaegar doesn't pursue her. If she never gets in with him, then she may not die delivering his child. But more than that, if Rhaegar married Cersei and her ability to produce children deters him from going outside of the marriage, it's likely that the rebellion is avoided entirely because it was after running away with Lyanna that her father Rickard and brother Brandon went to King Aerys and demanded that she be returned. Brandon told Rhaegar to come out and die, which prompted the Mad King to kill father and son, making an enemy of the Starks. If the Mad King isn't provoked, then Aerys won't ask for the head of Ned and Robert, which would cause Jon Arryn to retaliate as a result. So the rebellion, because of one decision, could very well be avoided, or at least put off. If Rhaegar is content with Cersei, then Robert will get to marry Lyanna as he planned. But I doubt that this will be a happy marriage. Maybe happier than his marriage to Cersei, but not as romantic as Robert made it seem in canon. I only know she was the one thing I ever wanted. Someone took her away from me. And seven kingdoms couldn't fill the hole she left behind. Because in both book and show, Lyanna did not love Robert. In fact, she was put off to the idea of marrying him because he was always sleeping around and fathering bastards. Even Ned in the books remarks that Robert didn't really know Lyanna. Regardless, even if they do get married, it won't be a terrible marriage, but I don't see Robert stopping his infidelity for her, which Lyanna won't be too happy about. But I digress. With Lyanna not being taken, the Starks not provoking King Aerys, this may mean Ned's father and brother get to live. This is pretty big because if Ned's brother Brandon lives, this means that Ned will not become the Lord of Winterfell in the future. More than that, this means that Ned will never marry Catelyn. Despite the love the two have for one another, Catelyn was never meant to marry Eddard Stark. She was betrothed to his older brother Brandon before he was killed trying to save his father from the Mad King's fire. If Brandon never dies, then Ned never marries her out of honor and to keep the alliance with the Tullys going. This also means that his children, Rob, Sansa, Bran, Arya, Rickon, will not exist. So Ned is pretty much left as a typical second son in this scenario, assuming nothing happens to his family. Perhaps Ned, if he's not going to be married to Cat, could marry Ashara Dane, the sister of the Sword of the Morning, Sir Arthur Dane. He did have a bit of a crush on her when he was younger, and it was rumored that they were lovers and that John might actually be her son instead of Lyanna's. 
though who knows if that is true. But the only thing that throws a wrench in the potential of this marriage is Ashara actually being alive. In canon, she took her own life for differing reasons. Some people say a Stark dishonored her. Some say it was because Ned killed her brother during the rebellion, among some other things, like her losing a baby. But assuming that the rebellion doesn't happen as a result of Rhaegar keeping it in his pants and in the confines of his marriage, Arthur Dane will survive in this new timeline. So maybe his sister Ashara will too. If not, or perhaps the match just doesn't happen to work out, maybe Ned will join Benjen on the Night's Watch. In the North, that is seen as a pretty honorable thing to do. He and Benjen could be a duo over there. Or maybe Ned is fine being a second son, minor lord, and bannerman to his older brother and find something else to do with his time. Anything is possible, but moving on. With the rebellion not happening and Rhaegar hopefully not making any enemies because he's too hung up on prophecy, this means that the Targaryens aren't ousted from power though Aerys would still be pretty mad. But it may not matter if there is conflict if Tywin is still around. With his daughter married to Rhaegar, he would be more inclined to ensure the family's prosperity as they are linked to him now. So even if war broke out, he may support the Targaryens and maybe even doesn't resign as Hand of the King. Now, regarding this, one big question I'm sure everyone is asking is, does Jaime still sleep with Cersei? More than that, is Jaime even appointed to the Kingsguard in this timeline? In canon, the reason Aerys chose Jaime to join the Kingsguard was to get back a Tywin he was jealous of him and would do pretty much anything to knock him down a peg, including having other nobles at his court make fun of him and laugh as they did so. Choosing Jaime, Tywin's pride and joy, to join the Kingsguard and leaving Tyrion as his heir was pretty much the worst wound he could have dealt the Lion Lord. But would any of this still happen in this timeline? I think it is very likely because I do believe that Aerys would still have it out for Tywin despite his son marrying his daughter. The animosity may not end just because of that and the Mad King could still name Jaime to his Kingsguard as a result. A difference I could see happening with this is Tywin resigning his hand of the King to his former friend. As I said before, with Cersei marrying Rhaegar, he is more inclined to be involved with the Targaryen family, and despite how he feels, he may just put up with it as a result. Though, if Jaime stays on the Kingsguard, this leads back to the question I asked earlier. Does Cersei still sleep with him on the side, even though she's with Rhaegar now? It's possible that she does, but also that she doesn't. Cersei was obsessed with Rhaegar in the past, and still is even after his death all these years later. I mean, she went to a witch when she was younger in order to find out how her life with Rhaegar would turn out. Though she doesn't name him in the show, Rhaegar was the one she was talking about when she said, Will I marry the prince? And when Maggie said she will marry the king, she assumed that it would be Rhaegar after he ascended the Iron Throne but I digress. I find it possible if she is still infatuated with Rhaegar after all this time, and say he treats her better than Robert did. He doesn't disregard her, get drunk constantly, cheat on her, hit her either, or is still hung up on a former love long past. She may be willing to be faithful even with Jaime around. Or maybe, because she's so self-absorbed, and because she has stated that she feels whole when she's in bed with Jaime, that an affair between the two of them could continue but it would be much more dangerous as Rhaegar isn't Robert, he may not be so easy to fool. So if that affair still happens, the siblings may get caught this time around. But we'll say in this timeline, Cersei is completely and utterly devoted to Rhaegar alone. And more than that, despite the possibility that I just threw out there, we'll say that since this is a different timeline and Aerys is making different decisions when it comes to the Lannister family, he chooses not to take Jaime into his service as a member of his King's Guard. Maybe he's content with having some of his lords making fun of Tywin every now and then as humiliation and doesn't need his oldest son. This will leave Jaime as heir to Castle Rock and once again help the relations between the Crown and the Westerlands instead of making that divide. Now, something interesting to think about here with this scenario is that in the books, when Jaime was still heir, Tywin was in talks with Lord Hoster Tully to marry his oldest son to his daughter, Lysa. So perhaps if Jaime is unable to join the Kingsguard, he could marry Catelyn's sister, and Lysa Tully becomes Lysa Lannister. Now, this would be a very interesting pairing, considering that Jaime seemed to have no interest in Lysa when they were kids, despite him being a squire in Riverrun for a while, and considering how Lysa turned out in canon. But a lot of that, you could argue, is because she didn't love Jon Arryn. I mean, he was a lot older than her, and the many failed pregnancies and stillbirths she had probably took its toll on her. So perhaps her being married to Jaime could result in her being a very different person as opposed to what we got before. But if he continues to show disinterest in her throughout their marriage because he's hung up on Cersei, that could be a very different story. Aside from that, with Tywin being more involved with the Targaryens this time around and potentially keeping his position as hand during Aerys' reign, it is likely that at some point Rhaegar will come to him and perhaps the two of them will depose King Aerys 
for the sake of the realm. This would make Rhaegar King and Cersei Queen much earlier on, and we have an entirely different story and Westeros on our hands. So many people would be alive assuming that Rhaegar stays a loyal husband and doesn't kidnap anyone for prophecy babies or makes enemies. The Targaryens will remain in power. Viserys and Daenerys won't have to flee across the Narrow Sea. This cuts Daenerys' arc over there as well, and most likely eliminates the dragons from hatching as well. Overall, things would be rather peaceful, at least I would assume so for the time being, but who knows how things will go when the long night comes for them. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, tell me what you thought down below, and I will see you all next time.